So starting out, obviously, um, the big news is is Jared did have that thumb surgery today. Um, this was something that we had feared that he had a fracture to it after the game. And then late last night, you know, after midnight, I actually got on the phone with, you know, talked to some of the doctors. I know he had consulted with his family, his agent. We talked about it and we felt like that was going to be the best thing to do for him and, and for our team. And so it's pretty amazing. You know, it, surgery went well today. I, I I spoke with Jared and got some screws put in there and, and um, he actually should be available if we're able to handle business, um, you know, for the, uh, for the playoffs, which is pretty amazing uh, credit to how quickly you can turn these things around now. But uh, I also think it's a credit to his toughness that, you know, he did pop that out and, and made a handful of throws afterwards and wanted to compete with his teammates. So, um, you know, that's kind of where we're at, but that was not something when I spoke with you guys yesterday that we, um, you know, had made that decision on that decision occurred late last night. And it really, it was actually early this morning, technically. So that's how we got to that. And then, uh, the other injuries, Daryl Henderson had a good high ankle sprain. It's something that's going to need to get fixed. Um, and so he'll obviously be placed on IR, uh, as well, not, not as well, but he'll be placed on IR. All right, Maria, Sean, who goes in the place of Jared this week? Yeah. John Wofford will, um, John Wofford will step up. Um, you know, John's done a great job preparing himself all year. If you watch and, uh, you know, the way that he's worked at it, there's, uh, I know there's confidence from, you know, coaches and from his teammates and guys will need to rally around him. Um, but, uh, we're excited about the opportunity that John will have to, uh, to lead the offense this week. Lindsay. Uh, Sean is Cam Akers going to be available this week. There's a possibility of that. You know, he's, he's made great, uh, he's really made great progress, Lindsay. Um, you know, I think even just looking at the way he was able to come back in the Jets game, and I know, I know Reggie's been extremely impressed. He is a physically tough guy, and so uh, there is a possibility that we will get Cam Akers back this week. And with John, what do you do to get a guy who's never played in an NFL game prepared to go out there with, with the playoffs on the line on Sunday? Yeah, I, th I think you just, you, you know, if you've watched the way that he's prepared behind the scenes, Lindsay, I, I think it's important that he keeps his same rhythm and routine because I do believe he's put himself in a position. Uh, God forbid if Jared were to come out that he would have been ready to step in and and do a nice job leading the offense. Um, you know, we're in the process of, of figuring, you know, the best way to maximize his skill sets. But, um, you know, I, I, I when I spoke with him earlier, I think it's important that he doesn't think he needs to change anything with his approach because he's done such a great job, in my opinion, from watching with his process, with his weekly routine and rhythm. And, um, you know, it's really just, you know, you're going to get the, all the reps in practice. And and now uh, looking forward to the opportunity that you have to compete with your teammates. Jordan. Back on Jared, um, what can you tell us about the specifics of the injury? Um, you said that you guys initially feared a fracture. Um, what What did you ultimately see? And then are you able to get into what the repair was? Yeah, you know, I, I I wouldn't be, you know, I I don't want to get into any of those specifics. He did have it fixed. It was, you know, he his his hand came down over the top on somebody's helmet, and you know, the TV copy caught him, you know, when it when it kind of slipped out and he popped it back in, and so, um, you know, he was able to tough it out and continue to play. And you know, I had a little bit of dialogue with him during the game in the middle of a stoppage, but um, he felt like he could grip the ball well enough and. That's why I think it is something that you want to be smart about. It's just really stabilizing that joint is probably the best way that I can articulate it. But if I I'll get a little bit out of my uh, area of expertise, Jordan, I start to go into anything too, you know, too more in depth than that. But it is something that it's not too, you know, it's not, uh, you know, significant enough that it keeps you out for uh, an elongated period of time. It's more about just stabilizing that thing. And that's what the surgery was reflective of. And that's okay, also and so, why he should be available as quickly as, uh, you know, potentially a, a week from now. Okay. And sometimes when you hear about stabilization procedures, um, it's temporary and then a follow-up surgery is required. Is that the case? You know, I don't, I don't, I don't believe so. I don't believe so. Gary. Sean, uh, do you know who did the surgery and where it was performed? Yeah, I do. But, uh, you know, just, just standard operating procedures, you know, I, that'll end up coming out, but uh, I'll just keep that between us right now. Um. Okay. Well, it's um, locally, if, if, you know. is there any thought of um, signing? I know the onboarding procedure can be, you know, is longer now, but will you guys sign, uh, attempt to sign another quarterback? Uh, and if not, who will be the backup to Wolford? Yeah. So, so Bryce Perkins will be ready to go. And then, um, you know, we will, uh, 
you know, I'm not sure where we're at with that process, but we'll try to get Blake Bortles on the roster as well. You know, I know you talked, you touched on this um, when you guys decided not to re-sign Blake Bortles initially, but what, uh, what kind of made you decide that you could go into the season, if you can revisit that, without a veteran and, and with a guy like John uh, as the backup? Yeah, the confidence in John, what he had shown um, with the opportunities, whether it be preseason, um, competitive reps in practice, you know, all the stuff that you're just evaluating every single thing that he does, um, you know, and, and we, we felt good about that. So really, it was it was a reflection of the confidence in John and um, looking forward to the opportunity that he'll have this weekend. Emmanuel, Coach, how, how would you assess the old lines play over the past weeks, especially with the, the goal line stand um, the, uh, at the quarter? Yeah, I thought, um, you know, I think the old lines played tough. I thought, you know, credit to Seattle's defense. They did a nice job. You know, they were really loading it up and playing pretty heavy. You know, I thought the third down and one stop on the sneak was something that was uh, was tough for us because we've typically, you know, you get in, you get a ball inside the one. We've been able to punch that in pretty consistently and regularly this year. And it was really the first time that we had been stopped in that instance. And so um, that was where you, you come back and you try to hit a little bit something wider, but they did a good job having a heavy, you know, kind of loaded front structure and, and you got to give them credit. They made a nice play there, but there's been some instances where they've done some good things. I did think we were able to get some good removal on, on some of our, you know, kind of a direct downhill plays where, uh, we got some positive hits, but, but ultimately, um, you know, we didn't do enough offensively really each of the last couple of weeks to, to play winning football. We're tennis and out. I mean, obviously Matt, you saw Malcolm, um, how do you spot the, the run game going going into this weekend's Cardinals? Yeah, you know, guys will be asked to step up just like John will be. Um, you know, Malcolm is a is a very, uh, you know, reliable, trustworthy player that's tough and, and can do a lot of things for us. Xavier Jones will be asked to step up and, um, you know, potentially Raymond Calais. So we've got some other guys uh, that, that Thomas Brown has really been developing behind the scenes that uh, I know will be excited if their number's called. Malcolm was saying that Xavier has like these little shifty. Um, how how do you kind of describe Xavier's kind of skill set? Yeah, I think he's a slash type runner. You know, he's 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 a bigger body than than what you think, but he's got the speed to be able to finish and and naturally can work edges on guys. I think he is built for a lot of the things that we do specific to the zone running scheme and um, and you know really be able to press it outside in one gap at a time and put your foot in the ground. And so did a nice job with the opportunities that we had to evaluate him throughout the course of camp. I think he's done a good job on the look teams and um, you know, this week he'll, he'll, uh, he'll get a chance to, you know, make some plays for the offense. Sam. Normally in these situations, as rare as they are, when a guy has no experience and is coming in, you talk about shrinking the playbook, but I wonder with some of his RPO experience from college, does that expand some areas at all that you can, that you can try with John or is it naive to think you could do that that quickly? No, I think uh, I think a big part of it, Sam, is, you know, without getting into too many specifics from just a game plan perspective, I do think there's a skill set and some things that that maybe we can do with him. Uh, I do think you don't want to get too far away from some of the things that he's been repping, that he's been working, that if in the instance Jared had to, you know, come out of the game that he could seamlessly step in. You don't feel like you have to make an all encompassing change. But I do think it is important to always have some agility and flexibility specific to that quarterback and. Um, you know, we'll definitely connect with him, making sure that we're identifying, all right, what are the ways that we want to try to attack a, a tough Arizona defense? And how does that match up with, with some of the things that he can do, whether that be what you had mentioned or, you know, maybe some things that are different than what we've, you know, shown on tape uh, offensively. And, and I just ask uh, just about him intellectually, uh, you know, some of his former coaches have said he's really uncanny. In, in what he sees and, and sort of uh, ahead of his time a little bit. Uh, and I wonder if you've observed that about him. I have. Yeah. He's uh, you know, he, he loves it. I mean, he eats it up. He's, he does a great job. He's got a great feel. And I think uncanny is a good way to describe it, Sam, in terms of just being able to recognize things, understand, you know, based on only deal with 11, if these guys are there, then, you know, what's the potential of, of a certain blitz coming from this side and, uh, what are the tools that you can activate to get it picked up or what are the ways that you can uh, do different things that make people pay? So I think he's got great wide field vision. I think he's got a great feel for the game and um, all of those things that his coaches have said, we're, we're, we definitely feel that here as well. Nick talked about Malcolm Brown, but how much does that help you to have a veteran like Malcolm Brown, especially in situations like this uh, when you have a running back down and potentially may have a running back uh, coming back in, but you have two guys that are uh, coming into the fold. 
Big time, Nick. Uh, you know, and really that's what Malcolm's been for that group as a whole. He's so steady, um, so reliable, and, and really he's, he's capable of playing on all three downs and, and making – and, you know, he's had a lot of production for us. And so uh, his consistent demeanor, his approach, uh, being a pro's pro, I think that's really set the tone for that room. I think that's why you've seen – such great maturity and, um, you know, advancements in their games, you know, from Cam and from Darrell. I think he's had a, a good influence. Obviously, you've heard me talk a lot about, uh, you know, Coach Thomas Brown and, and the influence he's had. But but it'll be a big deal uh, to be able to have Malcolm leading the way again this week. And and I know he's really been putting his arm around those younger guys. And, and here comes an opportunity for them to potentially contribute this week. Here, uh, first of all, does it help that you're going against Arizona, a team that you know pretty well in terms of familiarity? for game planning. And then secondly, um, it seems like guys like John in terms of his teammates is what that help kind of those guys rally around. It? Yeah. I, um, you know, I don't know that it helps. I think this is a really tough defense. I think coach Joseph does an excellent job. I mean, you know, you're not, the, the only thing I would say is, you know, because there's not as much inventory from a film standpoint, because we played them so recently, I guess that minimizes, you know, the amount of things that you necessarily have to look at as opposed to if we hadn't played them, but um, it's still going to be a great challenge. They do a great job of presenting a, a variety of looks that cause you problems, um, you know, really in all three downs. And so that's, that's definitely something that, that takes a lot of preparation and a lot of detail, both in the run game and in the pass game. Um, and then, you know, anybody that's been around John, you know, he's got a nice way about, he's got a great charisma, a great presence. He's a fiery personality, but I think the way that he goes about his business week in and week out, day in and day out uh, has earned the respect of his teammates. He's done a great job giving great looks for us, you know, for our defense all year. And then, you know, when he's had his opportunities to run our offense, uh, I think he's done a really nice job. And a lot of those things kind of have, have um, you know, been behind the scenes just based on the COVID restrictions and without the, you know, the preseason. But he, um, you know, and I, I think um, all those things have led to, to why he is revered by his teammates without a doubt. Kevin, uh, Sean, was there any other option with Jared? Uh, did anybody stick up for the idea of toughing it out? Yeah, I think, yeah, you know, I think if you if you asked him, he definitely would have wanted to do that. But you've got to you've got to make sure that that sometimes you help take the decision, you know, or help paint a picture of why this is the smart thing for the longevity of your career, and not just be so short sighted. And so I know Jared would have wanted to do everything in his test, power test. to play this week. Um, the test works. So we'll come to you at, right after this. I like it. OK, um, but I do think he would have wanted to do everything in his power to stay available. But I think also when you look at um, understanding just some of the parameters around, all right, let's get this in here, let's stabilize this, and then you could potentially be ready as early as next week. I think that was what made it the most sound thing. And then you always defer to the doctors. And when you listen to these experts and, you know, talking to Reggie or Neil Elitrosh and some of the other doctors, um, that was what they felt like was best. And, and that's where you let the experts be the experts and trust their judgment. And did Rob Havenstein have an injury yesterday? He had a, you know what, he had a little bit of a stinger, but, you know, it wasn't anything concussion wise, um, but uh, nothing that should restrict him um, moving forward into this week. Michael. So it's hard to imagine that a few weeks ago we'd be in this situation, but there's a scenario where if, if you lose on Sunday, you guys are on the outside uh, looking in again. But if you win, you control your own destiny and you're in. So my question is with, you know, Jared out and some other injuries, how do you, what's the conversation with your guys like? To, to get them motivated to get this win, but at the same time, not put too much pressure on them to, to make them force the issue. Yeah. I think, um, you know, the, the message is, is, is don't be afraid to put yourself out there and give it everything that you have. Um, even if it doesn't work out, because at least you'll have no regrets. You know, like you mentioned, Michael, I think it's important to take into perspective. Okay. A week and a day ago, you know, we were feeling pretty good. We we're at nine and four and, you know, a couple days, you know, a couple games later, you know, because of a couple different things that could go either way, you know, you're sitting at nine and six and we'll never make any excuses for how we got here. But I also think you got to be careful to let the outside in narrative shape, you know, the way that our guys are feeling about their ability to go perform and look no further than some of the, you know, resilient responses from some of the other teams. You know, you look at what the Steelers did on a short week against an excellent Indianapolis Colts team. You know, they start out 11 and 0. They have a couple tough games that aren't really characteristic of, of what they had been. And um, they found a way to respond and, and they went behind in that game as well. And so there's examples of that. I believe in this team. I trust in their mental toughness and 
think the the overarching message is let's uh, let's put everything that we have into this. Let's not be afraid to put it all out there one more time. Get back up off the mat and keep swinging and uh, and have no regrets, no matter how this thing ends up. Andrew, hey, Sean, to your point about um, you know the respect that his teammates have for John and and how he was as a scout team quarterback as either Tom Brady or Cam Newton or, or Kyler. Last time you played the Cardinals, he he was Kyler. So I guess two things. How was John Wolford as Kyler Murray? And and who was he uh, best, I guess, replicating this season as a scout team quarterback? Yeah, that's a good question. I, I think he's done a great job really giving a, a, a great look all season, Andrew. And, you know, some of the things that our defensive coaches are looking for are, are reflective of, you know, personifying the identity of that offense and that quarterback. And he's done a really good job of, of giving those looks, you know, a He's, uh, you know, similar in stature to, to Kyler and, and all those kind of things. And he did give a great look the last time we played him. I don't know that any week stands out more so than the other. I think he's just done a great job all year of providing a great look to our defense. And so, um, you know, that, that's that's the thing that I would say is is what, um, you know, has been encouraging is that he's run a bunch of different types of plays. He's tried to mimic and emulate a bunch of different types of great players that that play the position at a high level in some different ways. And, you know, and that's, uh, you know, that's where those guys have, have said, man, I got they've got confidence in John based on seeing those things because you can't fake it. And, you know, those guys really know. Jordan. Hey, Sean, I'm seeing some confusion out in the in the universe here. So just wanted to clarify, you guys ultimately ahead of Sunday's game, barring a snag, are, are going to have four active quarterbacks. Uh, Jared obviously will be inactive on game day. Right. Uh, John will start. Bryce Perkins is backing him up and then uh, Blake will come off the practice. Yeah, that's, spot. that's a possibility. You know, we'll be able to use the standard elevation on Bryce Perkins as yeah. opposed to, you know, the 53. And then we'll have a spot to give uh, depending upon whether you look at putting Daryl Henderson on IR and some of the other things that we have. So um, that's where we'll end up gaining that, that, that spot back. That's the plan, you know, and, and um, you know, we'll, we'll see. I know there's some different restrictions and I know we're in the process of that with Blake, but but we do have John and, and Bryce in house right now. Yeah, and and Bryce, you're looking at as QB two on Sunday. Uh, we'll see. I mean, you know, I, looking at him as a quarterback that we have that we can potentially activate. You know, John is John is the guy, and then you know, um, you know, you want to make sure that you have some insurance policies with with Blake and at least his experience and his familiarity with some of the things verbiage wise and experience in the system. But but Bryce has done a nice job and. Uh, as of right now, you know, that's, that's, if we were playing, you know, this instance, Bryce would be the number two. It, you're thinking next, maybe next week, if you guys are in the postseason for, for wit, or is that, has that changed? Yeah, that's, that's the plan. We're going to activate him, you know, where he's got the 21 day um, timer starting this week. And so get him on the practice field. And then, uh, you know, next week ends up being the target goal for fortunate enough to be uh, sitting here playing then. One point you called this season kind of mental gymnastics with everything you've had to deal with behind the scenes. I'm just wondering uh, what the last 24 hours has been like for you as you now navigate a playoff push, quarterbacks, running backs, and and everything in between. Yeah, it's a challenge, but it's it's part of the job, you know. And I think this year has has you know you, you've got a lot of different things that you're trying to work through, but um, you know th- this that's that's what comes with the territory. I, I think you got to embrace it. You got to handle it you know, just one thing at a time and, and, and kind of just check those items off, but make sure that you prioritize and attack. And, and that's where we're at. But it, it was, uh, I think the, the thing that, that, that I would say is the, the most exhausting, if you allow it to be, is just, you know, how much we put, put into these games. And then we, you know, we haven't gotten the result each of the last couple of weeks. And it's about, like I had mentioned earlier, you know, you get back up and you go put everything that you have into it this week. And, you know, what that looks like in terms of having to navigate through the inevitable injuries or COVID, whatever it is, you got to handle it. And, um, you know, we're not going to make any excuses and we got to be ready to go this week.